whatever. It is, it's October 1st, that's why it's a new year. Um, so thank you everyone. I think actually we're gonna wait one more minute because I saw people walking up the hall. So um, we'll wait one more minute. And oh, by the way, it gives me a chance to gather myself and figure out what I'm doing. So anyways, so how is everybody today? Good, 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 good. Alexis, how are we doing out there? Okay, well, let's get started because everybody's time is, is very, very valuable. And, uh, oh, there's Mr. Walker on his new knees. <laughs> Hi, Rob Walker. <laughs> By, hey, Rob, can we call you Bionic Man now? Yeah, so anyways, well, good morning, everyone. And as always, you know me, it's just really good to be together present with everyone um, this morning. So thank you. I know it's bright and early. I hope everybody had their coffee. In case you don't know, October 1st is International Coffee Day. So I hope everybody fueled up. And if I'm not mistaken, I think, I think, George, correct me if I'm wrong. Alexis, correct me if I'm wrong. I think this is the first all hands that we've ha actually had on October 1 the beginning of the fiscal year. Of course, I got a lot of raised eyes from Mr. Lee, Mr. Saunders saying, do you realize what's going on in my organization all night long? Um, and I, I have to say, I, I, I wasn't thinking. It's not the first time I have to confess. Well, here's Mr. Lee, he's not in his pajamas, so that's a good thing. Um, oh, you're, yeah. Yes, yes, but I do, Jay, I was in the middle of my apologies because I realize this is the first uh, all hands we've had on October 1. And I know you and Dave and others that were burning the midnight oil were like, are you kidding me? What are you doing? Um, so my apologies, because I know everyone was burning some oil all week long, all into all hours of the night, so thank you. Um, but we have a very, very packed program today. So I'm just, I'll save uh, my remarks for the end, but I do wanna jump right into the program because it is very, very packed. Um, and just as a quick overview, just to give you a sense of what our content is today and why it's gonna take so long to drive through it. Um, we have um, updates on the combined federal campaign. As a matter of fact, the. 2024 campaign is ready and rolling. Um, so we'll hear from our campaign manager um, and get introduced to all of the organization and office uh, coordinators. And then of course, we'll learn about our respective goals. Um, this year, WHS has an overarching goal of 125,000, but uh, we'll get a little more familiar with the substrate of the directorate goals. Um, after that, we'll turn to our CX team and we'll get um, a presentation from Tashana and her group on our management plan for 24 to 27. Um, and we'll look at kind of how our priority areas rack and stack and kind of what we achieved in terms of our objectives this year and where we're going. Um, we'll then shift into our organizational snapshots. Stephen um, Brooke will do the overview for FSD. Um, and then I know Glenn Buckner's here for ITMO. Um, and we'll hear uh, from both of those um, briefers. Guys, gotta keep it short. You can always come back. <laughs> um, after the snapshot discussions, that's when we'll shift to one of my favorite parts of the all hands and that's the awards presentations. This uh, today, we have a lot of very interesting awards. Um, we have externally gifted awards um, that are not only recognitions of our teams in HRD, ESD, and AD, um, but those kinds of recognitions are team wins because they speak volumes about the brand that is growing um, positively for our OSD. 
So uh, we'll get a couple of external award presentations there. And then, of course, we'll shift into our normal internal awards program, which includes um, the director's quarterly awards. And we have multiple uh, quarters there to confer. And then for the first time since we established the Director's Award for Excellence in Customer Experience, we will be conferring two um, awards today in that category. So with that, there's more people coming in, which is always a good thing. Please come on in. Um, and we're going to shift right away. LaVonda, I'm going to have you come up right away and kick off with the uh, CFC discussion, but let's just wait for people to take their seats. Please come in. Have a seat. Come on down. What was that game show? Make a deal or something? <laughs> the price is right. Yeah. Price is right. There's some high price seats right here in the front. <laughs> come on in, please. Okay. Okay, so uh, Lavanda, why don't you go ahead and proceed with the CFC discussion? Hey, well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Lavanda Lassane. I am your campaign manager for WHS. Unfortunately, our loan executive is stuck in traffic. <laughs> um, so she sent her regards. She was really trying to get here. She might get here by the end of this um, presentation. But we just want to go over a little bit about CFC. The campaign has started. It started on September 1st. Uh, so next slide. So does everyone know about the CFC and how it works? Oh, yeah. Yes? I bet you do. I'm going to tell you a little bit more anyway. So, um, so a great way is to pick your cause and throughout the year, um, throughout life, your causes could change. So we want you to pick a cause. Um, you can make your pledge. And I'm going to tell you how to make the pledge four different ways. Um, and then charities, the charities will receive your donations, which definitely helps across the world. And then the, you can also um, benefit, your community can benefit from it. Okay, next slide. So there's four different ways you can give. You can use the online portal. You can use paper pledges. We are trying to go away from paper pledges, but we still will provide them if you request them. And then text to donate. This is a one-time payment that you do through a texting um, option. The only thing I can tell you is that sometimes the donation might not come back to your organization for your goal. So I'm just giving you awareness on that. And then the giving app. So all of our people that love to use our phones, you can do it straight from your phone. You don't have to log on to a computer to um, give to CFC. Next slide. So I said it's four ways, but it's really five. So volunteerism. So if you decide that you want to volunteer instead of donating monetary pledges, you can look onto the website and there's a little helping hand on there that shows you what organizations that you can volunteer with. So volunteerism, you can do it throughout the whole year, but you need to pledge before the end of the pledge season. So on December 5th, we're hosting a seed program international. So we're packing seeds at the Mark Center. Um, for our donation for WHS and some of the other organizations in the Mark Center. What we did on this day, this was the loan executive team. We went to friends and families, and we packed food for underprivileged um, areas in the Northern Virginia, Maryland area. So we had an amazing time. We were able to help our community through volunteerism, and we were able to put the information in the portal, and that money goes toward the charity that we selected. Next slide. So these are a few of our charity events that's coming up. We have our first event at the Mark Center. So if you're part of the Mark Center, please come out to Main Street on the 16th. If you're here at the Pentagon, go over to Apex 1 and 2, 9 and 10 on the 17th. So guess what? Back to back. You pick which one. Um, and then we have a few more coming up in the following month. So these are a few of our charity events. Your coordinators will be sharing all this information with you. So please look forward, we, well, we look forward to you coming out, learning about the different charities and having some fun. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the biggie. If everyone walked walk through the hallway, you've seen the lemons. All right, so this year is the lemon challenge. Last year we had the give happy cards. So the lemon challenge is you grab a slice of lemon or lemon juice, you take a bite or a sip, pucker up and take a picture. So and then you give happy. So this is our theme for the year. We're excited um, to have all you participate in. We will be doing 
We will be puckering up at the end of this event. And <laughs> if you would like to pucker up, you can pucker up in the hallway when, you, when we leave the um, auditorium. So next slide. All right, so it's time for our goals. Are you guys ready? I hope ready. you are. All right, so financial management director, if the coordinator is here, would you please stand? I'm not sure if everyone's here. Okay, so your goal is $9,000. Here, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so she will be helping you raise $9,000 or volunteer $9,000 worth of time. All right, next slide. Facility Service Directorate. All right. Wow. This is our coordinator, and she will be helping you raise $11,000. I feel like I'm on a talk show. I mean, like a game show right now. Next slide, please. Oh, yeah, sorry. Executive Services Directorate. All right, he's in the back, $15,000. Immediate Office of Staff, General Counsel, History and Library Directorates. RSA. All right, $22,000. All right, Acquisition Directorate. AD. So anyone here? Hmm? Okay, you have to put a challenge? Okay, $24,000. Human Resource Director. Human Resource. I know he's on leave, but I'll represent him right now. We have forty-four thousand dollars. We gotta get. Oh, she's in the back. There we go. Back. So totaling one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. So I'm excited. I hope you are excited about our goal and that we're going to crush it. So next slide. All right. Now we want to make sure when you're thinking about your passion and your causes, you give impact. So yes, last year we had the theme of Give Happy, but now we're talking about giving nourishment, giving help, giving community, giving shelter. So when you're thinking about it, these are things that is, you're providing to the different um, charities as we're moving forward. Okay, next slide. And that's all I have, so let's give happy. There you go. Right. Levanda, thank you, thank you. WHS, you, uh, you know, always crushes it, so I guess it's just going to be another crusher year. Hey, maybe instead of, or in addition to lemons, you can put orange crush out there. How about that, Fonda? There you go. We might need it after we pucker. I know you have me on tap to go out there, so I'm good. And certainly, we don't have to look very far than just the news of this past 10 days with all the natural disasters that are just destroying parts of the East Coast. Um, and so um, pick your passion, as LaVonda said, and um, find what makes you feel good and fulfilled and gives you purpose. So thank you. And the events are always so good. So expect to see everybody out at the events. And stay very, very connected with your coordinators. Coordinators, thank you in advance for what you do. It's a heavy lift, I know. Um, but thank you all for stepping up. This is an extra duty. Uh, in addition to what you do every day. So thank you very much. <laughs> okay, next, Tashana's here to talk a little bit about our CX management plan for 2024 to 2027 and then just some of our priorities and the alignment and achievements actually that we've already recorded for some of our objectives. So Tashana, over to you. <clears throat> Automatically? Yes, it does, all right. <laughs> Thank you. Please stay puckered up while I'm <laughs> announcing today's CX uh, management plan. And this is the WHS CX management plan. It is a management plan for customer experience owned by all of WHS. So that is everyone that's in these seats and that's looking on uh, camera today. And here's my voice. This is our management plan. Uh, next slide, please. All right, I don't know if you remember, uh, maybe a couple of months ago, one or two uh, all hands ago, um, I announced that the CX office was producing or developing uh, a customer experience management plan. Well, we are here. We actually have our first ever WHS CX management plan. That's uh, this is the booklet. Uh, this was um, a labor of love <laughs> from all of us, really, uh, we got a lot of uh, support from our leadership, so thank you, uh, from our employees and from the CXO team. Uh, that includes our contractors and, and our government. Uh, this, again, was um, about one year in the making uh, because 
there's a lot of uh, steps into customer experience. I think as we have announced or learned over these years, it's not just saying yes. Um, it is really about being strategic, how we do our business, why we do our business, and benefit those who we give our businesses to. Um, so just a couple of things within it. Uh, again, the DOD strategic management plan, uh, that's the SMP. We, we've come from that um, document, which actually gives priorities of the whole DOD. So we take from that and we develop our own here in WHS. Uh, the strategic approach to CX and CS customer service as an enterprise wide level. Uh, includes all levels of employees, like I said before, that is involvement in CX and transparency um, of WHS actions with CX initiatives. Uh, next slide, please. All right, this right here is just, and I think a couple of you got the card. Right here, we have the handy dandy handouts. You will always receive these from us so that you can have a view um, at your desk or at any time just to see what the priorities of your organization are, uh, specifically with CX. So priority one was standards and policies. That's how we as an organization um, are going to move forward strategically with CX. Priority two, I think you'll like this, empl employee education and training. Um, that's those eye compasses that you have to take by December. Don't forget. <laughs> um, <laughs> The next is uh, priority three, measurement and accountability. And this is where we, we're kind of getting to new grounds. We're looking at data to make our decisions right now. Uh, not just opinion, not just what we're all saying, but really what our customers and what we're saying in one voice to push the decisions that WHS leadership's making for us in CX. The next is CX employee recognition and feedback. I love this one because it is, it is about you. Employee experience is part of customer experience. I want to say that one more time, employee experience is a part of customer experience. Without a happy you, there's no happy them, okay? But one thing we do want to do or continue to do and do it at a higher level, as Mrs. Miners will show you a little bit later, which I'm excited about, is we want to recognize you for all of the good that you do. We do get back data that gives us our challenges, but it also gives it back what we're doing right. And there's a lot of right in this room. Um, and this is our opportunity to uh, acknowledge that and um, tell our employees how well you are doing as well as our customers. Uh, last but not least, enhanced user technology solutions. Uh, this is looking at user-friendly technology. I'll just make, for example, our SharePoint sites or whs.mil. That has a lot of um, gold in it in terms of data, how people use, including us, how we use our technology to better do our business, better to better communicate what we do, um, and, and uh, advance or enhance our business processes. So next slide, please. These are our accomplishments, 2024, was a doozy. We were doing a lot uh, for the CX. Uh, in priority one, we did the customer service standard card. You know I'm going to do this. Everyone should have one. If you do not, please contact me. Um, this is also available online. So I'll make sure I get those, that uh, information to you. So the customer service standards, uh, the CX guide and principles, those are memos that you've been seeing throughout the year from Mrs. Miners uh, and Mr. Celeste uh, about CX. The next is definition of a customer. In general, our customer is whoever we're serving at any given time. So right now, you're my customers. The next, employee education. Again, I'm going to hit the education and training. Um, the WHS 101 and WHS CSS at, in action on iCompass again by December, please. <laughs> um, another education is we had the opportunity to go to AD and actually give training uh, and education about how they specifically um, can improve their customer experience. The next, measurement and accountability. Uh, we've done our customer baseline survey. Some of you may have heard about that earlier in the year. So that's creating baseline so we know where we're starting, so we know where we have to go in terms of improvement. Uh, customer surveys. Um, which you all are customers, so you're included in the survey. The next survey is actually coming out in October this, this month. Happy New Year. Uh, so please um, keep your eye out for that. We'll have other announcements for that as well. Um, for employee recognition, um, 
a great big shout out to Mrs. Miners for supporting this. We actually have our first director's award for customer uh, excellence. So, uh, excuse me, excellence in customer experience. So that is a great accomplishment. Uh, the next slide, please. Um, this is part of the booklet or some pages in the booklet. Obviously, Mrs. Miners is always gonna be there because she is our champion, she truly is. But what I did do is I asked for stock pictures uh, for some male models. And what I got was uh, Mr. Lee, Mr. Sanders, Mr. Irvine, uh, and our security specialist as well. So um, we have some big guns in our book. <laughs> Uh, of male models, so Be thank you very much out, for those right? pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to say uh, seriously that WHS is very is innovative within DOD. I don't think we understand sometimes uh, who we are and what we do for the department and for our public, but WHS is the first to establish a CX office within DOD. WHS is also the first to do a CX management plan, an actual strategy um, on how to uh, uh, enhance and uh, improve our business, uh, specifically with our customer at the center of that. And third, WHS is actively uh, internally and externally getting customer feedback. A lot of people do this, but right now we're on a track that we are actually um, uh, uh, an innovator within W, excuse me, within DOD. I couldn't remember the word, but we're an innovator within uh, DOD and we're making traction. People are looking at us and seeing us as an example. So I applaud you all uh, and our leadership uh, for the efforts that you've made uh, throughout the years, but specifically for this year and our uh, enhancement of customer experience. You'll be hearing more about this. Um, if you haven't received one of these cards, uh, we'll hand some out at the end uh, of our um, all hands and uh, thank you. Thanks to Shauna. Tashana um, has done a lot of work um, in this area, not only with you, but also with the external intellectual community, academic community, others across DOD, others across the U.S. government, and in industry as well. Um, kind of finding what best practice is, what do we mean by the employee experience. You know, everybody can say we want to have a, make sure we you know, have a positive customer experience. Um, but there, as she has said, there's a lot more to that. But it starts with this kind of codification of our plan, our framework, our standards. Uh, because by doing that, there's no place to hide now. We are holding ourselves accountable. Um, and that, uh, you've heard me say it a thousand times, it's always good. Um, because if we don't, if we fall short, then that's the feedback loop that we need to try harder, do things differently, double down on our commitments, and perhaps even talk more to the customers to see what their expectations are. But we have uh, accomplished a great deal in this past year. Um, it makes me feel really, really proud that WHS is leading the way uh, in this area. And, um, that's always a very positive form of feedback is emulation. When people want to model what we do or rob what we do, <laughs> that's always um, a very positive statement about what we're doing, how we're doing it, and its substance. I hope everyone is staying on track with their training, their education. Please keep the uh, uh, handy dandies at your desk, the cards that remind us of our standards. We remind ourselves of what our obligations are. I think when you have a visible, you know, mind, uh, memory jogger at your, at your desk, it really helps you every time you get up from your desk and go out there and interface with the customer to remember what's important. So, Tashana, thanks to the CX team for everything that's been done. Mr. Salasis has been leading a lot of that and spearheading a lot of that. Bob, thanks a lot for your leadership as well. So now we're going to shift to our spotlight discussions. Uh, as we have said before, these spotlight discussions help us 
get to know who's in the WHS team a little bit more. Many of us are very, very busy every day, all day, uh, doing our thing, head down in our organizations, and don't really get a chance to hear and look around and see what else is going on in the organization. And oh, by the way, there's a high, high probability that what you're doing is interfacing with something else in WHS. Um, we have a lot of new people to the WHS team, so we want to continue these spotlights so as to deepen everyone's understanding of WHS mission, functions, key players, programs, because it will be many times that someone will walk up to you and say, oh, you, you work in WHS. Can you tell me who does X, Y, and Z? And one of the best things to be able to do is to be able to respond right away and say, yep, that program is under that directorate and the key leader in there is X, Y, or Z, and um, maybe even go to the WHS website for some additional information as well. But this is getting to know the family. So with that, I'm gonna turn it right over to Steve Brook, who's gonna give us a quick overview on the Facility Services Directorate. Stephen. Yeah, thank you very much, ma'am. So uh, good morning, and uh, there's a lot going on in the world right now, and all of us exist, if we will, to support that. We've got crazy things going on, as we know, in the Middle East. And we're supporting leadership that's making decisions about that by the hour and releasing statements. We've got, we are all supporting the National Guard and our military services that are supporting North Carolina, the state of Georgia, uh, Tennessee, and all over the Eastern coast here after the devastation. But on that note, that's just the relevance of what we as a collective team do. Ma'am, it's not so much a spotlight because I've taken the light and it really shines through a prism. So I wanted to start after doing the real world events, just to say congratulations, because we are all on the first day of FY25. And for many folks, Jay Lee and his entire team, and uh, uh, Dave Sanders and, and Dave Kao next to him, that's a big deal, because I know that the uh, emails were burning last night until after midnight, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of final actions were completed. So congratulations to everyone. Hey, real quick, if I could, so Facility Services Director is kind of large, it's kind of the, uh, it's kind of the center plank, I think, of a lot of which, uh, what uh, Washington Headquarters Services stands for. Could I have the FSD folks stand up if you're an FSD or one of our contractors? Come on. Come on, people. Don't be bashful because I see go. you all over. There you go. So, number one, I thank you. Hey, what, what's going on in the back? Come on, stand up, guys and gals. There you go. Okay, please sit down. No, listen. Uh, the first thanks is to that team, because uh, we've got some incredible folks. A lot of them are here in the room and came down. And uh, every day, it really is about 24-7 making it work, okay, to protect our senior leadership. Uh, we've got a slide up here. It's, it's got our mission statement. Uh, really, it is about 24-7 uh, readiness. That is up for the National Military Command Center. It's not just here. That's uh, facilities throughout the uh, National Capital Region to include uh, the Mount, uh, Raven Rock Mountain Complex. And we're all here to support that, number one. And, and you know, should we forget, we should not forget. Uh, but I tell you what, it is a team sport to do this. Uh, we have a large portfolio with WHS, and many of you share the same customers. But you know, we've got 60,000 customers coming from uh, Miss Beale. And by the way, uh, I feel guilty every time I see this card, because this is like the Ten Commandments. It's actually a lot harder than the Ten Commandments, I think. Uh, Thou shall not kill is a lot uh, easier than a lot of these things. So I'm challenged every day by our great customer services. No, I'm serious. I read that thing and I feel humbled because it's hard to live up to. Uh, but it, it does take a team across the whole WHS to, uh, to keep everything working. But I wanted to say, you know, we've got 15 million square feet of property. The Pentagon's about six, six million square feet. It doesn't necessarily mean a lot to you, but there's 26,000 people that have workstations in the Pentagon. And that, as you all know, because we're all part of this, is a city. Uh, we have over 75 other lease spaces, half of Crystal City. We've got a footprint in half of the buildings in Crystal City. That does not count stuff that we have a little more remote. Reston, Maryland Square area, down in Charlottesville, and then a couple of outliers that are outside of the state of uh, Virginia, Maryland. Um, 
it's a large portfolio and a lot of folks to take care of, but predominantly we're kind of working with the same 52, 53, depending on how you count it, major customers, the major customers, the Secretary of Defense and the Deputy Secretary, start there. The 19 components of OSD that we all work with, and I know they're the primary portfolio of our HRD, ECD, and all of our other directorates. Uh, we also have the, you know, it's not all about OSD for FSD, the Pentagon, that's less than 20% of the Pentagon. We have the other secretaries, the military departments, uh, and we're also obviously working with uh, the National Guard Bureau and the services, but also the DAFA that are in here or the defense agencies. And that's such, just not here at the Pentagon, but it's all over. And everyone in this room helps to support that, and I am incredibly thankful for that. I did want to, I'm going to go uh, to a couple slides that are just pictures, but I want to thank some folks in the, in the process. If we can have the next slide. So these are kind of uh, eight pillars we stand on. One is this idea of readiness. And there, there literally are command and control centers, both in this building and throughout different facilities that we are all supporting. And they are zero fail mission. They're 24 seven. And uh, they don't just happen in the basement without a lot of attention of the folks in this room for power, security, uh, preventing leaks when it rains, <laughs> keeping the communication systems up. It's kind of amazing. But, we also have this role that we all share, which is this continuity of operations. If something does happen that is unexpected or is an inconvenient truth in our daily life, and that could be a traffic jam getting to the building, or it could be a problem with the building, or it could be an adversarial move uh, in, our, in our networks. Okay, we've all got to be prepared for that. And we spend a lot of time, we're kind of part of the backbone of at least the facility infrastructure for that. Can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, we have an entire uh, professional team that is about life, health, safety, but you know, our role is to provide safe, secure, adequate, operationally functional, uh, and effective facilities throughout. So the first three, life, health, safety, and operational effective means you can go to in your office, it's secure, it's safe, and your computer works, right? Or your telephones, your communications and stuff. Uh, but beyond that, efficiency. You go in the bathrooms and you see the plaques that say, please throw your, your compost away in the green bags. We run the environmental programs for the community, if you will, for you and for the extended community, as well as the energy efficiency programs, which are pretty uh, vast here at the Pentagon and all over. Um, modernizing the Pentagon is a major priority. And so uh, we have tons of folks that are working the engineering part of that requesting resources to bring us or to keep us well into the 2020s of, uh, of the 21st century as opposed to the 1990s when the last renovation started in the Pentagon. Can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, this is our lease space portfolio. It's kind of just a, a reminder that it's not just all at the Pentagon. We're supporting OSD and our department throughout the National Capital Region. And we have, have an entire team that helps manage those buildings and all of those elevators and all of those water fountains, in addition to the ones in the Pentagon that we try to keep running. Uh, we are trying to do, we have a lot of initiatives with energy, okay, uh, both to prevent uh, or to create carbon-free uh, power sources. And we've got a lot of ideas on that, and we've got projects that are doing that. Some people call it electrification, but electricity has been around since the 18, uh, 1810. Uh, so it's really not the electricity we're after. It's something that doesn't create carbon when we produce it, which is what all our factories do. So there's a lot of options out there and we've got teams that are working through that. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? So uh, we do a lot of customer experience because Ms. Buell has been coaching us really hard this year and we're trying to listen and get better and we are challenged by that, but we have a lot of programs that you see in the apexes on Earth Day, on Child's Day, we're supporting that. And by the way, some of the services we do I did want to go through that. We've, we've got special events that we, uh, we host in the Pentagon. Yesterday, there were six. There are over 1,500 a year. Now, the ones that you hear about are the big ones that require a lot of external, outside influence. But every day, there are five to six ceremonies going on in one of the apexes or the Hall of Heroes or one of the facilities that, that we are all working with together. And, uh, and finally, uh, a high-performing workforce. So that's where I'm going to segue just very quickly, if I can get one more minute, ma'am. I know I'm kind of late here. Uh, we have a workforce. Uh, a year ago, we were at 70%. 
Today, we're at about 84% of fill. We're about 540 government employees, uh, maybe 541. We're tracking down one. Uh, that doesn't just happen, and that's the great partnership of the HRD team, and not just Ms. Nolly and Scott, their leadership, of course, but we've got uh, folks that we just work with every day. And uh, Jasmine, I don't know if you're here. Alvarez, are you here? Yeah, thank you for standing up. There you go. And how about Nell Barber? Nell, right next to her. Okay, uh, I'm going to go down the row. I bet I got uh, Sar Sarita Watkins. She is not here. And uh, I know I missed a name, Tammy Smith. Tammy's not here either. I didn't see her. But thank you. Because it would not have happened without your, your hard work and partnership here. Uh, hey, we just finished the fiscal year. We're opening a new one. But the FMD team is another great partner in everything we do. And I see Lance out here somewhere. And Lance Christian, if you can stand up. I don't know if the programming team is here, but Katie Dunlap. Thank you, Lance. Okay. Oh, right next to him. Okay. Ms. Gutierrez. Yep. And, uh, and, of course, under the leadership of Jay Lee in the front here. And I really appreciate it. Couldn't thank you enough uh, for getting us through last year and to building the future of this next year. That's going to be awesome. Uh, Executive Services Division. On a daily basis, with these ceremonies, the halls and walls, as uh, Mr. Irvine calls it, is just a ton of partners that we couldn't, that do incredible things. Brenda White, I see you out there. If you could stand up, ma'am, thank you for being here today. Everything that has to do with graphics, she is the master and the go-to if you need good common sense on how to get it done. And I appreciate it. And just an incredible eye, for, I guess, for art, which is something I don't have. And then we've got uh, Regina in the front row. And Regina, if you can stand up. And I don't know if Miss Merced, Mimi, everyone calls her, is here. But oh, we've got the driver's team right back here. Parking, it's amazing what you guys do on a daily basis. And we could not operate the Pentagon community, the Mark Center, without some tremendous work and, and partnership. And it's just uh, incredible how that works. Uh, hey, our security team, Dan Purcell's here. But I saw uh, Roberto Mercado. Where is he? And is Larry here? Larry may not be here. Uh, Always forget his last name. I know I messed up here. Uh, Robinson. Yeah, Robinson. Yeah, how could I forget that? Thank you. And uh, how about Brandon? Okay, yeah. there you go, Brandon. Hey, guys, thank you. Stand up. Stand up. Look, we could not do, this is the security apparatus, not just for skiffs, but for every lease space that we have and ensuring that we meet uh, common sense security practices, the right fencing and stuff. And we could not go a day without the consultation with you guys and working with you. So thank you so much for that. Um, and let's see here. I do not want to leave out, oh, Mr. Sanders, because it was a big night last night. It was a big day. Mr. Sanders, we've got the, the D2. If the D2 could, D squared could stand up, please. I've got Dave Ko and uh, Dave Sanders here. Please. And, and I don't know if Connie is out there, but if we have all of our, uh, Contract officers that have been doing con had do contracts with FSD, if you could just stand up. They didn't make it because they're still doing contracts, which is okay. We, we have some overruns. There's a couple that are sliding in over the next two days, but that's okay. But I, sincerely, I want to thank the partnership of this great organization talking about WHS. Uh, we are all proud to be a part of it, all those that stood up at the beginning of this, and many in the back that are wearing their uniforms that didn't stand up for me, but I can tell you, um, half of that crew back there is, they are, are alter, alterations in our shops, and they are mechanic shops. And they are 24 seven making sure the air is right, it's not leaking in the bathrooms. Oh, by the way, we're rebuilding the Secretary of Defense's Nunluger Conference Room, and it's a nonstop game. And where is Kim Cocker? Please stand up, ma'am. I wanna thank you, because this, uh, this is one of our heroes that is 24 seven. Every holiday that over the last year, I think Thanksgiving, Christmas, I think every holiday she is in here working and leading the team and actually taking shifts for some of the younger folk that, uh, that way they can have their holiday off. So I wanted to thank you personally, ma'am. And unless there are questions. That's... Any questions for Stephen? Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. I think this presentation is emblematic 
of why we all need to know what's going on in WHS, because as I said, there probably isn't many functions at all being executed within this enterprise that we're not connecting across the enterprise with other key areas uh, and offices. So, um, and oh, by the way, as a part of the CX training, that's why we have WHS 101, to keep everybody current with uh, our mission sets, our business lines, um, they seem like they're multiplying like rabbits by the day, but, um, but it's very, very important to stay current and knowledgeable of your teammates um, because we're connecting every day across the enterprise. So thank you, Stephen, for that. Uh, the next spotlight, we'll turn to Glenn, and he's going to talk a little bit about our ITMO office. That's our enterprise I, uh, IT and management office for the WHS enterprise. Um, it's a beehive. It's behind the scenes. Everyone takes it for granted, but trust me, it's a beehive. So, Glenn, over to you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Glenn Buchter. I'm the WHSCO and director of the ITMO. I um, want to go through a few things this morning just to kind of highlight some of the folks and some of the things that my office does that you may not be aware of. So, in today's world, basically everything either depends or is impacted by IT. My shop is involved in an awful lot of those things. Several years ago, um, the IT resources within WHS were shifted into what became JSP, and that left quite a few gaps within the WHS infrastructure for supporting IT activities. So in July of last year, Mrs. Miners helped us set up or establish the WHS CIO uh, position and the ITMO office. To do that, uh, the goals for that were several things. One, to fill a lot of those gaps that, that were no longer being done because JSP is taking over the IT resources, but not necessarily taking care of all the things that have to be done for WHS's IT needs. So this leaves us with several different goals that we're trying to meet with the ITMO office. And we'll kind of just mention a few of those things, then we'll go through a few things as far as what my team actually does involved in some of those. Uh, one is to improve the IT, uh, common IT services. That's us coordinating with JSP. Another goal is to improve the system compliance. There's a huge myriad of uh, requirements that every IT system has to go through and uh, a lot of different things that they're kind of being gapped out right now we're trying to look at too. So one of the big things, especially recently, is the effort to try to improve our efforts for records management and how important that is within every single WHS system we have. In addition to your, what you have on your H drive or your O drive or whatever else, and now the one drives and so forth. So that's a bigger undertaking. We'll get to that in a minute. Then also we want to improve the investment or planning. One of the things we're, we've done poorly in the past is trying to figure out how much money do we need to do all these different mandates that we're required to do. And there's an awful lot of guidance for WHS as far as, like every other DAFA, to meet certain criteria as far as what's important to the DOD CIO and to other entities. We also want to improve our cyber posture, and that is a huge undertaking. We also want to improve the accessibility and get all of our systems and our documents and stuff like that 5 way compliant. We want everybody to be able to access the information and the systems that WHS provides. Next slide, please. Just to kind of go through a few of these things, the first one we'll talk about is what I'd call systems management. My office coordinates with a whole lot of different organizations throughout WHS for their systems, making sure they're compliant, giving them guidance on certain aspects of what needs to be done and so forth. But in addition to that coordination across the board, my team also coordinates and manages several key enterprise solutions as well. Some of the systems you may have be familiar with, some of you may not. One of the big systems that we are responsible for is the Interactive Customer Evaluation System, ICE. That's pretty much the, one of the biggest feedback systems for customer uh, across the board, across all of DOD. Uh, uh, Jeremy Consalvo is our program manager for the ICE app program, which has been going on for a very long time and is used across the board for thousands of different organizations. Another one that my team is responsible for is the EPMS system. Um, this performance management system is what the Performance Improvement Council within WHS utilizes and also provides a lot of information as far as 
how we're doing on our performance across the board for various things. We're also involved, another thing about that too, is that various dashboards and so forth that we're responsible for, like we've also been engaged with the PSA dashboard, PSA management dashboard. So that's really big. Now the other thing too that I haven't got on the slide that I, I do want to mention is that my team is also responsible for coordinating things like the WHS website and the SharePoint sites and things like that. We're not responsible for every single page on that or every single site on it, but we do help coordinate across the board for all these folks that are kind of trying to work together on it. Um, going on to common IT support, my team coordinates with JSP or DISA or DOD CIO as far as rolling out all those initiatives that seem to kind of irritate everybody, whether it's the LCRs for, for workstations or whether it's the uh, upgrade to a new version of operating system or whatever it happens to be. That seems to be a never ending thing. I was talking the other day about the fact that it, about two or three years ago, it seemed like we get one major event every six months or so. Now we seem to get one every week. And, and that's just because of the nature of how fast IT changes. So we coordinate on several things. One, we'll coordinate with those big initiatives going out. But then also, if there's things that your particular director of the office ITM can't handle, we'll also help engage on their uh, behalf to try to get things coordinated and get them done. Next slide, please. So I kind of jump around on a few of these things. But one, I, I didn't mention the, the records management. And that is just so important with the requirements that we have to meet for that. And then a lot of people sort of take that for granted that we don't really have to do it for systems. We just have to do it for our H drive and that kind of stuff. But so there's going to be a major effort to go through and make sure that all your systems are compliant, gathering the records that they need to. And, and again, I'll be working with JD Smith um, on that as far as how we got to coordinate that type of stuff. Um, one of my leads on my office is actually Marquise Lewis, who's going to be working with helping us do some of that stuff in our office for records management. Um, cyber defense reporting, we coordinate with JFHQ Doden to basically we receive orders and taskers from JFHQ Doden as far as vulnerabilities, things that need to get patched in systems and so forth. We rely a lot on DISA and JSP to do a lot of that stuff for us, but we also have to coordinate with individual system owners within WHS to make sure our systems are up to, up to what there should be. The other part of that too is there's also a lot of making sure that the systems are not vulnerable. There is what's called the Vulnerability Disclosure Program that we have white hats and things like that, not necessarily in my office, but they report issues. And then we'll have to coordinate with the folks throughout the organization to make sure that those type of vulnerabilities are addressed. Um, I mentioned the IT investments. So this is, there's two things. One of the major things that comes out is there is a capability programming guidance that comes out every year that says, these are the priorities that our organization needs to follow. We'll convey that out to the system owners. We'll basically have them uh, see how that's going to fit into their organization and then start to figure out how we go through and start to fund it. This is something we'll be looking at quite a bit going forward, especially in FY25. Now, the last thing on here, and again, there's a lot of things I'm not going to mention here uh, because I feel like I've already talked way too long, but is IT accessibility. And that's something that's really, I think, very, very important. Again, everybody takes certain things for granted that you can see the screen the way it's supposed to be, that you can understand what it's saying on the screen, that kind of stuff. So to me, that is very important. If we go to the next slide, a couple of things I want to point out. My team does several things to help improve our accessibility. One, we have a small subset team that does a lot of various things, such as we help you train to figure out how do you actually implement 508 compliance within your systems. So we provide training, we'll help you test your systems, make sure they're compliant. And then if you also need assistance, we'll also help you mitigate the things that, are, are, that you find. So my team, which is fairly small, cannot go ahead and do all those things, but we do help you kind of get to know what you need to do go forward. So one of the key issues on that is that's a pretty broad task. If you look at the number of documents alone that WHS produces, it's sort of staggering. So we have definitely seen a lot of cases where very important documents have gone out and they have not been compliant and there has been some issues. So we try to avoid that as much as possible. So if your director is working on something, you can reach out to us to get the training so you can make sure the documents are correct, first of all. And then two, if you have an issue that you need to have some assistance, my folks can help do that as well. Again, this has to be a partnership 
because it's just overwhelming. There's no way that every time you want to send out a document, you just call my office and we'll take care of it. It doesn't work that way. But at some point, it should be the fact that this should be a kind of a common process. We shouldn't have to think about doing this. Same thing with records management. It should be part of the culture. And unfortunately, that is a very difficult thing to get over because it takes so much effort to get there. So one other thing I, I want to mention we kinda, before we, we get past everything here is I mentioned the records management, but there's another aspect, too, of data. Besides the EPMS systems that Ogan Nekrasov is the program manager for and does a fantastic job on, and also the records management records and things like that, there is also collection of data. And one of the things I want to point out, too, is that it was mentioned before about surveys. The CX team is using surveys to collect a lot of data. My team supports that survey collection process for both WHS and, in some cases, some other organizations. So Julia Schmerkin is, is our expert across the board for survey collection. And I know a lot of you have kind of worked with her in that case. So there are so many things that she is involved in as far as data collections for organizational surveys like CX or customer surveys or so on, improving the ICE application as well. So there's an awful lot of, of folks that are going on that too. I also mentioned too with, and again, I, I feel like I'm jumping around a little bit, but I don't want to remember, don't want to forget anybody. Also with the ICE team, Jeremy is the lead for that, but Mike Castle and Ed Blonsky are basically our people that you're going to deal with if you're working with the ICE application. They get things set up for you. They support, they are basically the help desk for ICE for the entire DOD. So, and that's, that's a pretty huge undertaking. Now granted, it is one application and they do it so well, they've been doing it for so long, it's, it seems easy, but I'm amazed by what these guys do. So the other person I want to point out on this stuff too, especially because I talked to the 508 uh, aspect and getting that to be part of our culture, is the 508 program coordinator is Tappan Suthar. So he's the guy that if you're gonna have an issue or whatever else, you need to kind of work with through his team and so forth. I just wanted to point that out. So with all that said, there's an awful lot of things my team does. This kind of scratches the surface, but I wanted you to be aware of what it is. Um, so it's still a very small team, but I also wanted all the members of my team to kind of stand up so you can at least see them. There you go. All right. I think I've talked quite long enough, so I'll turn it over to the next person, unless there's any questions. Any questions for Glenn? Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> that's at the operation that's always behind the scenes, and you don't, we all take it for granted until it goes down, until we don't have anything. Um, so Glenn, and his team absolutely need the strong connecting partnerships with the ITMs. You absolutely need to prioritize your relationship with ITMO um, because that is the really important connective tissue there. Um, as Glenn said very quickly, underneath each one of these business lines, it's massive work, massive, massive work. He also is in a jungle because not only does he deal with all of us in WHS, which is a zoo of sorts, um, but he has to be responsive to the DOD CIO and the DISA J6. That is just a, a daily fire hose um, of taskers, um, mandates, and um, then he, with his team, consulting with me sometimes, figuring out how they're gonna meet the, answer the mail. So um, I just wanna let you all know that this, this function is critical to how WHS gets our work done. So please, please um, support him and engage accordingly. Uh, you know, the reward, Doc Cook always used to say the reward for good work is more work. Um, Glenn is supposed to be our component CIO, which he is, and our ITM director. But as he noted there, there are things that he's been drafted into by virtue of the talent that resides in the small team and the understanding of kind of the issues. The deputy secretary's mandated DSD dashboard. 
Glenn and his team have been drafted into supporting the design build of that, working, of course, with the metrics owners and CDAO and others. But that's a business line not in our lane. But again, reward for good work is we heard about you. Come on down and jump into this. Um, and as he noted, there are several methods and means that have broader service for the Department of Defense. So when we talk about him being our component CIO, you can see his responsibilities are far larger than just our WHS enterprise. So Glenn, thank you. Thank you, team, for what you do every day behind the scenes. It's a grind, I know. IT is a growth industry. Like you say, you close your eyes and the next gen's right on top of you. So I hope that these spotlights are helpful to everyone. You know, you might know a lot, but maybe there's one little nugget that you walked away with uh, today, whether it's understanding maybe a, a function that the office does or just getting to know your teammates. So um, we'll continue to bring these spotlight discussions forward because I do think um, that they're very, very, very helpful for our uh, cohesion in our enterprise. So we are now going to shift to our awards portion of our um, uh, discussion today. We're going to start with the uh, awards that have been advanced from outside of WHS. And as I said in the open, um, these are huge compliments, not only to the organizations and individuals that uh, they are conferred on, but Again, they're just a statement about what people are feeling in general about WHS, its mission, and the people that execute it every day. So with that, um, Scott, I'm going to ask you to come up because we have the Outstanding Workforce Recruitment Component for Year 2024 award. Um, that was awarded by the Director of DOD Human Resources Activity. Um, this WHS received, uh, there was multiple categories of awards within the department. Um, this whole framework for awarding um, workforce recruitment programs is administered by the Department of Labor. Um, but inside of DOD, WHS HRD was recognized as the small component, in the small component category, essentially for its um, workforce recruitment program focused on federal and private sector employees, um, not only local, but nationwide and colleges and uh, graduate students, recent grads, et cetera, with disabilities who want to bring their talents and their intellects into the workforce. So um, I was lucky enough to go to um, the ceremony that was chaired um, and hosted by Jeff Register, who's the head of DOD HRA, um, to receive, as the director of the component, the award. But this award is HRDs. They are uh, under Richmond Burko. This program is doing great things. And it's really, really important that the rest of the WHS enterprise hears about that achievement and what it represents. So Scott, um, let me present to you. Again, this is a Department of Defense Award. So this is for the Outstanding Workforce Recruitment Program component, small category for the year 2020. Stand up, Come on there. There you go. Okay, here we go again. Regina Grant and Darren Irvine back on the stage again. 
This is uh, a premier facility award uh, that ESD is being conferred. Um, it's from the International Parking and Mobility Institute, and it's in recognition for ESD's um, attention to the international set standards for professionalism, customer care, accountability, responsibility, and performance. I'm inverting this. I'm going to invert this order. Um, I want to uh, have the, award, well, AD received an award um, in the form of a letter of appreciation from the president of Ida. And um, is um, Elizabeth Faith here? There she is. I knew she was here. I saw her. I, you know, I took my glasses off because I'm in at that age where you can't see anything there and you can't see anything here. So you just throw the glasses away and you stare. It's really bad, really bad. Um, so Tom, are you out there? Okay, can you please um, read the citation um, or actually in this case, it's the form of a letter that would be formative to a citation from the president of Ida to Elizabeth, please. Yes, ma'am. The following individual from the Acquisitions Directorate is the recipient of the letter of appreciation from the president of Ida, Ms. Elizabeth Veith. Dear Director Miners, thank you for your actions supporting DOD's contract renewal with Ida for our Systems and Analysis Center, FFRDC. I'd like to thank you and the rest of the department for your continued support for our mission to answer the most challenging questions facing the nation using extraordinary scientific, technical, and analytical expertise. I'd also like to recognize the tremendous service Liz Veith has done for DOD during the contract award, as well as on a day-to-day -day basis. Liz unfailingly applies a sense of purpose, deep contracting expertise, and a commitment to outcomes. She worked extremely hard with the entire team at WHS ANS and Ida to coordinate everything to make the award happen by July 1st and the final contract consistent with the needs of the mission, Ida, DOD, and the nation are in her debt. We cannot thank you enough for giving Liz the support to meet this critical mission deadline. Signed, General Norton A. Schwartz, United States Air Force retired, President of Ida. It is a huge recognition. When the president of Ida takes time to pen a personal note. Um, I know Norty Schwartz pretty well, and he actually came over to see me as well. And in addition to the words in the letter was gushing about support that he has received from Elizabeth and just the broader AD team. So as we said before, individual awards are awards of the, for the whole team. So Dave, kudos to you and the rest of the team. Okay, so now we're gonna flip back um, to a very, very, very significant award J.D. Smith, please come up. J. 
JD is being recognized with a SecDef level award um, for all the work that he does um, in records management. There was at least three times I heard records management mentioned today and at least three times that I heard J.D. Smith's name mentioned as well. Um, and this is not to be understated what this represents, um, given that this is being conferred at the highest levels, from the highest levels of the department. Um, it is significant from the standpoint of J.D.'s expertise, his customer-centric focus, his command of a domain of activity that is complex. It's not for the faint of heart. It's compliance work, and anybody who's in compliance work, and there's a lot of us in WHS that are in it, you know it's hard stuff because it requires disciplining those that you serve um, within the framework of law and regulation. But to do that in a manner that still allows them to do their job but also for us as institutionalists to make sure that we're safeguarding our great institution. So with that, I would like everybody to stand for this award. Why we read the citation. The following individual from the Executive Services Directorate is the recipient of the Meritorious Civilian Service Award, Mr. John D. Smith. Mr. John D. Smith is recognized for Meritorious Civilian Service as Chief Records and Declassification Division, Executive Services Directorate, Washington Headquarters Services, Office of the Performance Improvement Officer, and Director of Administration and Management from August 2015 to August 2024, Mr. Smith's exceptional efforts ensured the ability of the Department of Defense to protect highly sensitive and classified government information that if released would have caused exceptionally grave damage to the United States and our allies. He engaged key stakeholders within the United States government to obtain buy-in for the establishment of procedures for the review of North Atlantic Treaty Organization documents containing sensitive and classified United States government information at risk of being earmarked for declassification and public release by the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Mr. Smith's efforts positioned Department of Defense as a lead architect of the United States government initiatives to align the United States government and North Atlantic Treaty Organization security, declassification, and public disclosure procedures and policies. He constructed a coalition of member nations that shared the same objection, objections and aligned with the United States government vision for improvement. Through great diplomacy, Mr. Smith represented a multi-member nation request to create a joint working group to explore areas of opportunity to align the North Atlantic Treaty Organization's information security and declassification and public disclosure policies to that of member nations. In November 2023, the 32 member nations unanimously approved the establishment of the Joint Working Group. His leadership has led to the immeasurable continual protection of highly sensitive and classified Department of Defense information. The distinctive accomplishments of Mr. Smith reflect great credit upon himself and the Department of Defense. When you hear some of the words in that citation and the interfacing parties that are noted in that citation, it essentially says again that WHS's impacts are not only local, but they're around the globe. 
And I don't think we think about the reach of our efforts and our contributions. Um, that's why, again, this is so important that we bring our teammates to the fore so you can hear what they're doing, how they're doing it, where there's impact, and how it's appreciated. Um, so JD, congratulations. It's a tremendous, tremendous accomplishment. And I know that Luz is somewhere here. Um, everyone probably knows Luz Ortiz retired um, last week. And um, that was a teary ceremony because Luz has been a stalwart inside of ESD. But I know she mentored JD quite a bit and was a tremendous teacher. And see what happens when those of us that are kind of mature, I won't say old, but the mature t group, and even the not so mature group, teach each other and our teammates in what we know and what we've learned and look at what happens when we have good students who go out and get it done. So Luz, wherever you are, thank you. Darren, thank you for setting the tone down there. And of course, JD, thank you. Okay, so now we are going to transition to um, what I think is kind of special. Um, you all may remember when I established um, the Director's Award for Excellence in Customer Experience. And um, that was akin to all of our work in the CX uh, domain with all of our training and planning and emphasis on the essentiality of us being a part of the customer experience. <clears throat> but um, as with anything, we're doing a lot of hard work and it's really, really important that we recognize where our efforts are really, really making an impact with the customer. Um, and today we are going to um, confer two awards. I think one, Alice, I don't think someone is here. Is, is Larnetta here? She's not here. Tom, we will still read Larnetta's award citation because I want everybody to hear her achievements in this area, but we will confer two excellence and customer experience awards today uh, from two teammates inside of HRD. Um, Alice Bell is here, so I would ask Alice to come up, please. difficulties. The following two individuals from the Human Resources Directorate are recipients of the Washington Headquarters Services Excellence in Customer Experience Award, Ms. Alice M. Bell and Ms. Larnetta E. Muhammad. Ms. Alice M. Bell is recognized for leading a team that maintained integrity in the hiring process and delivered tangible, mission-critical results by reducing the time to hire average from 82.5 days to exactly 60 days. The services rendered by Ms. Bell demonstrate a keen understanding of the Washington Headquarters Services customer service standards and directly resulted in measurable improvement in service delivery. Ms. Bell's efforts to serve as an example of WHS continued commitment to delivering a level of customer service support that is unmatched. The distinctive accomplishments of Ms. Bell reflect great credit upon herself and WHS. Ms. La <laughs> Ms. Larnetta E. Muhammad is recognized for delivery of excellent customer experience outcomes. The services rendered by Ms. Muhammad demonstrate a keen understanding of the Washington Headquarters Services customer service standards and directly resulted in significant improvements and innovation in delivering excellent customer experience outcomes. Ms. Muhammad's efforts serve as an example of Washington Headquarters Services' continued commitment 
to delivering a level of customer service support that is unmatched. The distinctive accomplishments of Ms. Muhammad reflect great credit upon herself and the Washington Headquarters Services. As we have said before, and I'm sure you all hear often, the Deputy Secretary strapped HRD with a mandate for a 60-day time to hire an OSD. Um, you guys have to understand what that means. Uh, as far as we can find out, WHS's 60-day time to hire is the most aggressive goal certainly in DOD, and maybe even the USG. DLA and DFAS, um, some of our partner organizations in the administration of civilian personnel programs, are frequently mentioned not only to Christine, but to me to say, do you realize how aggressive that is? Um, yeah, we're living it every day. So when you hear of this achievement that Alice has recorded to reduce the time to hire uh, for the months of July and August for OSD to exactly 60 days. That is Herculean because hiring is <clears throat> a partnership between the hiring manager, the HR specialist. Frequently in some of these bigger organizations, we have senior administrative offices involved in the flow of paperwork and of course the selectee. And if any one of those goes bad or, or protracts, you're gonna have a problem with executing your time to hire at standard of 60 days. So this is emblematic of the huge reputation Alice has in OSD. When there are issues to be spoken to and problems to be solved, for the OSD PSAs, Christine is always asked, what does Alice have to say? Because Alice has the inside view on OSD. OSD is one tough, tough customer. We know that in the FSD world. <laughs> we know that in the AD world. We know that across WHS. OSD is a tough customer. Um, but when you are being asked by name to infuse your best expertise and perspective as Alice is frequently asked through Christine to do, uh, that's a huge compliment. Um, the customers absolutely love Alice and Ms. Mohammed as well. Her achievements are more on the SCO and the DAFA side, but um, this, these are specialists that are engaged, looking for solutions, Move, removing impediments that are discretionary, working smartly, working quickly, working timely. So um, I'm really excited that this is the first conferring of these two awards. And um, Scott, to you, and then I know Christine had to step away, but please extend my thanks to her as well. Thank you. Okay. Now we are going to go to the director's award. Um, we have multiple quarters of awards just by the way the timing played out. So we have um, um, quarter one, this is calendar year quarter one and calendar year quarter two. So, um, Tom, the are following you out there? Yes, ma'am. The following four individuals are recipients of the first quarter 2024 director's award. From Facilities Services Directorate, Mr. Marcus I. Johnson. For his exemplary performance as Electronic Industrial Control Mechanic, Facilities Operations and Services Division.
from Facilities Services Directorate, Mr. Alan N. Obaldo. For his exemplary performance as Engineering Technician, Integrated Technology Division. From Executive Services Directorate, Ms. Marcelin L. Patterson. For her exemplary performance as Transportation Management Analyst, Pentagon Services Division. From Facility Services Directorate, Mr. Jonathan Van Hoos. For his exemplary performance as Supervisory General Engineer, Facilities Operations and Services Division. The following five individuals are the recipients of the second quarter 2024 Director's Award. From Facilities Services Directorate, Ms. Kimberly R. Coker. There she is. For her exemplary performance as Electronic Industrial Control Mechanic, Facilities Operations and Services Division. From Facilities Services Directorate, Mr. Brian Blackson. For his exemplary performance as Materials Handler Leader, Facilities Operations and Services Division. From Acquisitions Directorate, Ms. Felicia M. Smith. For her exemplary performance as Program Management Analyst, Enterprise Support Division. From Facilities Services Directorate, Ms. Nicole M. Rhodes. For her exemplary performance as Supervisory Building Management Specialist, Directorate Management Division.
you might have to build another wall down there in FSD. That's a lot of hardware to hang up on those walls down there. But these are your teammates, everyone. These are people who grind it out every day, all day. Um, and it gives me great pride to recognize everyone, but I want to be able to recognize everyone. So directors, keep the nominations coming. This is, this is really, really important to recognize our teammates. So um, this is always what I call the, the prehistoric dinosaur portion of the, <laughs> of, the, of the program, where we talk about length of service awards. Um, and this year, we have 38 recipients. And it's about a total of 625 years of combined federal service. That's just a, that's just a really, really breathtaking number. Um, and it's really, really important that you guys look around and see our new people that are coming in just at the, be at the beginning of their careers, those who are mid-tier careerists, and then those who are at the back end of things. Um, and just to say thank you to them and to imitate them in terms of a commitment to public service. There are tremendous rewards and fulfillment in public service. And um, so it's very, very important that we all listen to all of those that are contributing to this cadre of committed career civil servants that are right here in our ranks. So Tom, I think what we'll do, we'll read all the names and then we'll do one big clap at the end, right, Tom? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'd like to ask the audience, like Mrs. Miner said, to please hold all applause until the names have been read, and we'd ask each uh, length of service recipient to stand and remain standing until all the names have been read. Five-year group, Ms. Jasmine J. Anderson, five years, ESD. Mr. Jarrett R. Benshoff, five years, RRMC. Ms. Leanna M. Dawson, five years, HRD. Ms. Mary Michelle Evely, Evely, five years, HRD. Mr. Byron Nashun Ford, five years, ESD. Mr. Tabius O. Graves, five years, FMD. Mr. Derek R. Gutierrez, five years, FMD. Ms. Amanda K. Rohana, five years, HRD. Ms. Sandra Safo, five years, HRD. A tenure group, Mr. Justin D. Brashears, 10 years, RRMC. Mr. Michael Patrick Brown, 10 years, ESD. Mr. Nicholas S. Codori, 10 years, RRMC. Mr. Fernando Contreras, 10 years, FMD. Ms. Evelyn D. Cooper, 10 years, ESD. Ms. Wendy Kim, 10 years, FMD. Mr. Eric O. Lindegren, 10 years, ESD. Ms. Amanda N. Negron, 10 years, HRD. Ms. Leslie K. Skeet, 10 years, ESD. 15-year group. Mr. Anel Hadzibotic, 15 years, FMD. Ms. Sandra A. Horton, 15 years, HRD. Ms. Kathleen H. Ives, 15 years, ESD. Mr. Adam Johnson, 15 years, ESD. Ms. Sandra L. Lucas, 15 years, FMD. Ms. Tina L. Riley, 15 years, ESD. Mr. Oliver Schmidt, 15 years, ESD. Mr. Michael V. Sieve, 15 years, FMD. Ms. Alicia N. Starks, 15 years, HRD. Uh, the 20-year group, Mr. Kenneth L. Haynes, 20 years, ESD. Mr. Dennis Holmes, 20 years, ESD. 
Ms. Sandra M. Eitner, 20 years, immediate office. Mr. Walter G. Kopp, 20 years, FMD. Mr. Chan Lee, 20 years, ESD. Ms. Deborah M. Jax Pearson, 25 years, HRD. Uh, now with the 30-year group, Mr. Howard R. Dawson the 3rd, 30 years, RRMC. Mr. Rod Malone, 30 years, HRD. Ms. Priscilla, Mr. Priscilla B. Lapata Jr., 30 years, immediate office. Mr. David L. Riddick, 35 years, ESD. Uh, now the 40-year group, Ms. Brenda J. White, 40 years, ESD. Dr. John L. Harrison Sr., 45 years, HRD. And Mrs. Regina F. Miners, 45 years, WHS. Gray hair. Wow. That is, that's some service. That's some service. And obviously, all of us here and in the hinterlands believe in the virtues and rewards of public service. And, and I will tell you, there's no, nothing greater, um, having been around for a long time myself, um, the, the reward of not only the mission side, but the people side, the relationships, the sense of purpose um, are all very, very unique. and. Um, should be deeply valued. So thank you all for your service. So um, in close, I just wanted to make uh, do a couple of highlights. Um, I wanted to just give a quick snapshot of kind of where we ended <laughs> 2024 um, because there was a lot, a lot of water that we carried this past fiscal year. Um, and we'll start out just with a couple of numbers because numbers seem to matter. <laughs> um, so we'll talk first about Jay Lee's operation. Um, Jay Lee um, closed out $16 billion plus dollars worth of expiring funds for a 99.9% .9 obligation. Not only is 16B a big number, B for billion, B for big, um, but this is, and Jay doesn't talk about this, but it's a 63% from where we were in 2023. That's a big, big, big leap in the workload, in the customer demands, um, and all the modulation inside the FMD operation that needs to occur to, to get the mission done. Um, the other thing is, as I mentioned and as descriptive of our expanding customer base, uh, FMD picked up a couple new customers outside of OSD. OSD, you know, it doesn't matter how big it gets, how much Congress mandates structure, we service OSD. But, Jay picked up two external customers, one uh, DTSA, Defense Technology Security Administration, and a significant addition in a combatant commander in U.S. Cybercom. Um, this is just massive expansion of mission and uh, program activity. And Jay, thanks to you and your team. For WHS, though, I just want to make sure that you understand how big our number is. Um, we executed, as we closed last night, $1.3 billion worth of organic WHS funds. You know, $1.3 billion is a big number for most people. Um, but, of course, that's across all of our appropriations, our O&M, our MILCON, our building management fund, and, of course, our PRMRF. Um, that's a big number. But I'm going to say the following comment, which is very, very complimentary to Jay and his team. Here they were executing that big number, 
and that's a hardship. But they managed to garner $130,000 in efficiency savings that were a discount essentially for early payment. That's the sign that the operation is humming, humming. So Jay, thanks for all your leadership there. Dave Saunders and his team set a record last year, but they broke their own record this year, <laughs> uh, obligating just under $3.9 billion in contract, uh, supporting not only our operation, our service customer, but some other DOD customers who the word is out, they want contract support, they're going to AD. That's a huge, huge number. And equally significant is in that number is a $1.1 billion um, that went to small business. And as we have all spoken here before and we all know, small business is the engine of this country. So when we sm support small business, we are doing something good for the country. On the HRD side, as we've spoken earlier, um, the OSD being the tough customer as it is, very hard year, very hard year in 24. Um, OSD grew substantially. Um, we had new structure imposed by National Defense Authorization Acts, which levies huge hardship on the HRD and the FMD teams particularly, FSD too, finding space but I'm talking about kind of the organic stand-up of organizations. Um, so this growth, this unprecedented growth in OSD um, was colliding with a period of time where you talk to anybody in DOD or outside of DOD or in industry, it is a really hard recruiting environment. It is really tough everywhere inside the government and outside the government, and particularly here in the national capital region where we're all kind of competing for the same excellent talent. Um, it's a thankless undertaking. But despite the unprecedented growth, Christine and her team managed to record a 90% fill rate for OSD. That's a big number. It's a big number when you think of the dynamics the occupational series that are represented all across the OSD and just the senior leadership that we serve and their demands. They're in a sprint. This political leadership, as all political leadership, they're here on a sprint and we're trying to keep up with them. So the fact that Christine, through the hard efforts of her personal staffing team, managed to help the OSC PSAs reach their 90% fill rate is, is, is a huge, huge compliment. And oh, by the way, the rest of the HRD team has to support all of those expanded workforce uh, personnel. So this is a huge achievement for HRD in general. Um, as we heard and we recognized openly, um, the time to hire mandate that the deputy hoisted on the HRD team was merciless and unforgiving. But as we heard and we recognized through Alice, um, they have broken their own, I think shattered your own expectations. Isn't that fair to say? I mean, that is a tough goal. And they managed to make it happen for the OSD team. For our WHS, we are at about an 88% overall fill rate inside of WHS. So we have work to do there to get ourselves up into the 90 degrees, uh, the 90 percentile. Um, people, as we heard it all morning this morning, people are our engine. So I ask that managers, supervisors, double down in your recruitment efforts. But if you all know somebody who you think would be a great addition to the team, tell your supervisors and managers. We, well, I am on a mission to really build, build this team, not only to its capacity, but 
build the excellence and uh, the aptitudes and the acumen that a mission set like WHS needs. So please, um, recruitment is all of our jobs. So if you know someone, please, please tell them to come on down <laughs> and have a conversation. Um, FSD, Stephen did a good job at kind of laying out the broad um, mandate that is always FSDs. Um, we had people uh, in their pajamas late last night burning the midnight oil, but FSD team, you're always around 24-7, um, as we know. <laughs> um, we are under strong, tough mandates in the facilities area across broad spectrum. The energy side, you know, we're trying to keep abreast with the presidential mandates for energy and resiliency. The expansion of OSD and our customers, we're always looking and needing to accommodate more people uh, with space. Um, and space of all different flavors, by the way, in all different locations. Um, FSD is diligently still working on the triad uh, what I call the triad initiative, which is the Pentagon reset, the Mark Center optimization, and the lease space drawdown. Um, that is massive and it's complex. And um, there's a lot of attention in it. A week doesn't go by that we don't get some little love note from the deputy on something that has to do with the FSD mission sets, particularly space. So FSD team, thank you. Thank you. Uh, on the mention of Mark Center, you may have noticed um, those of you who either are at the Mark Center for your, where your offices are or go back and forth from the Pentagon to the Mark Center and back, um, we are on a mission to um, in, in, import some new enhancements to the Mark Center. Um, that's a joint effort by ESD and FSD. Um, and where this derives from, just so you know, um, the secretary is the installation commander for the Pentagon reservation writ large. Um, and his OSD team is largely here in the Pentagon, but he also is respond, he needs more space for his OSD team. And, um, there's also uh, concurrent responsibilities for the defense agencies and field activities that are under the authority direction control of those PSAs. Thus, the Mark Center being the alternate location that we're trying to earmark and brand. So what we're trying to do at the Mark Center is kind of replicate the enhancements, the encoutrement, the services um, that are here at the, the, at the same level and look um, at the Mark Center. And this is a huge undertaking again by uh, Mr. Irvine's team and, and um, the FSD team. Um, so if you see anything happening over there and you like it, can you please provide some feedback? If you think that there's something, an idea you have, please flow that as well to either ESD or FSD, because we really, really are being very purposeful about the look and feel of, of the Mark Center as the alternate um, location for the OSD and the uh, Defense Agency and Field Activity Team. Um, so as we, we, we're saying goodbye to 2024, <laughs> and here we are, New Year 2025, um, here at the month of October, um, so, as we always say, new opportunities to shine, new opportunities to go out and do good and big things. Um, the month of October, just as we think about where we'll impact, um, October is Energy Action Month. Um, and later this month, we're going to do a ribbon cutting um, for the first electronic um, vehicle stations. So, that's kind of emblematic of the month of October. Um, October is also civility in the workplace. 
really, really, really important. We need to be treating each other as our, well, first of all, we're teammates, so we should be treating each other like we want to be treated with respect and regard. It goes a long way to making long days easier. It goes a long way to creating positive, upbeat, and team-centric environments. You've heard me before say, and I truly believe this, this is why I always repeat this, civility costs nothing but buys you everything. So I ask you to think about that day to day when you're in the trenches. We're all in the trenches at some point, um, side by side with your teammates or face front with your customers. Everything we do is public and um, it has effect and it can, we can either choose to have a positive effect or negative. But civility is very, very important to me. One of, I work for every secretary <laughs> since Weinberger, and um, one of my favorite secretaries who m left a lasting impression on me was Secretary Gates. And you know he's written a lot about civility. He meant it. He left an impression on me, and I mean it, because a civil workplace is a happy, positive, productive workplace. Today, we're, what, 36 days away from the presidential election um, and the ensuing transition of administration. Regardless of party, the prevailing party, there is always a transition of administrations, meaning the people and the ideas. WHS has had an historic, very heavy lift supporting this important, impactful constitutional activity. And we're at it already, again. And um, it's consuming large swaths of our enterprise. So like we said, no rest for the weary. We closed out 24 and we're right in the fire hose in 25. Jay Lee, we will rely on Jay Lee to steer us through the biggest challenge that's facing us, or one of the biggest challenges, and that is we start a new year under continuing resolution. That is hard. It's hard on the workforce, it's hard on planning and execution, um, and it just kind of requires us to be very conscious about our resources, what we're doing with our resources, where we're applying our resources, and how we're prioritizing our resources. Jay will steer us. My hope is that congressional leaders will be able to strike a deal here before the expiration on December 20th. Let's hope. Um, but, you know, we've been here before. We're WHS. We're not going to let that challenge slow us down. It never has. Um, and, but it makes for a much more complex environment, no doubt about it. Um, and we'll just have to be very conscious about what we're doing so as to maintain our standard that we want to maintain. Um, but the directors um, will be in this with me um, as we march here in the last couple months to the 20th and see what portends. But just know it's, it's a tough, tough environment. October is also kind of that launch point. Everyone saw earlier in the year um, the direction to uh, establish a new security directorate. Um, actually, it's going to be named the Security Enterprise Services Directorate. Right, Mr. Forche? Yep. Um, and in the several months, these past months, um, the security teams that have been in HRD 
and the Office of Security under Dan and ESD have been consulting on this design build of this new directorate. So October 1 um, represents kind of that date today when we're kind of forming an initial operating capacity conceptually. Um, and it's a big deal. Uh, Chris has been leading that work in consultation with Dan and Christine and Scott and Bruce Tweedy and Darren's team um, looking at how we're going to put Humpty Dumpty together. Um, my mandate to them is we are not breaking anything. First of all, we can't afford to break anything. <laughs> we're in a fire hose. Um, but we are going to design this apparatus so it's more coherent, easier on the customer, more efficient. Um, as Jay Lee reminds me, the gravy train is over. Not that we ever had a big gravy train in WHS, but the gravy train is over, so every dollar is going to matter. So this security enterprise um, portends to be modernized, transformed, and efficient. But today, we kind of step out there. There's a lot of work that will be done in the formalization of the director between today and the end of the calendar year. Um, but this is a, a big body of work that will be many months in the evolution. Um, but I'm very, very excited to be a part of this change. Change that, frankly, we've talked about, well, I've been around so long, I remember it from decades back, where we talked about a more optimized security enterprise. But I firmly believe we've got the right people, the big brains at the table, the expertise in forming the complexities of this, and, and it's going to be big. Today is also the day that we are operationalizing the OSD onboarding team, cell team. Um, this is derivative from a deputy secretary directed mandate that's kind of an adjacency to the time to hire, where the deputy is, was, was looking to increase the time to hire to the tentative job offer, but then was also looking for the acceleration from the final job offer to the person seated on day one, which I'm now monitoring when we put Humpty Dumpty together, both time to hire and onboarding, it's time to fill time to provision. From the day that RF, uh, the um, request for personal action is received to the day that someone takes a seat with access and with basic provisioning so they can be a productive contributing member of whatever organization they're going to. Um, that uh, the deputy directed that WHS do that um, and we're doing it. It's going to be uh, organized and aligned in the new security enterprise because uh, much of that pattern of activity is more of an adjacency to the security and the access pieces and the IT. But it's a federated ball game too. We have, it will be a mixed footprint, not only with our WHS security team, but we will also have players from our partners in PFPA, uh, J6, uh, and uh, DOD HRA. So once again, here we are, you know, at the, epicenter of some new initiatives which pretend to have quite quite the impact. So here it is, October, <laughs> the first month of the fiscal year, and you can already see how much is going on. Um, and of course, um, EEO team is always front and center, uh, working a lot of the survey instruments in support of the deputy secretary and the PSAs and the WHS um, service workforce. Small business was a big contributor to the successes down in AD um, that we recorded last night and the team recorded uh, last night. So never a dull moment for WHS, ever. Um, and um, But we are here at the juncture of the new year. And frankly, what the new year is really depends on what we want to do individually and collectively. Uh, the great thing about this is that there's a lot of discretion in this for all of us as leaders and members of this team. 
So, you know, the possibilities for our success are kind of right here, right with us. How we want to get our jobs done, you know, choices that we will make for effectiveness and efficiency, always remembering that our customers are, should and always remain at the forefront. So in close, as we welcome the new year, um, I would, you always hear me word, use this word too, you're probably sick of me by now, um, intentional. Intentionality.